Joe. Well, the center fielder Bob Baylor steps in. He's the second hitter in the order. Came in hitting a 250, but uh, I think he's a better hitter than that. Last year he led Toronto with a 310 average. Had five homers, 32 RBIs, and he was the number one choice that the Blue Jays made in the 76 expansion draft from Baltimore. Pitches outside for a ball, and that's a young player that uh, the Orioles, I'm sure, did not care to lose. Baker with a pitch took something off that good breaking pitch one and one to Baylor Tigers two runs four hits and no errors and the Blue Jays two runs three hits and no errors as we play here in the sixth inning it's a pop up left side Trammell calling all the way and Allen puts it away one down and it'll bring up Roy Howell third baseman he has walked and grounded out. One of those real good contact hitters batting at 291 came over from the Texas Rangers in a deal for Steve Hargan, the pitcher, and infielder Jim Mason in May of 77, which is outside for a ball. And again, that good curveball by Baker took a little off of it. Now you really have to like the way Baker's really poised out there on the hill tonight. Well, I like uh, that he's mixing his pitches up. Uh, I still think his fastball exceptional here tonight, and uh, makes his curveball even that much better. It's a pop fly back over the dugout on the left side. Uh, the one thing I would like to see Baker do is throw the ball inside a little bit more. It seems like the players are really looking for the ball out of the plate. It's a dribbler over the mound. Tough play for Trammell. He got him. Great play by Alan Trammell. Just did get him on that quick flip. And he fielded that in the uh, skin part of the infield. Well, that was close, and we'll look at it again. You can see Trammell just made a whale of a play, and it is bang, bang at first base, and you be the umpire. I can't tell. Well, Mr. Kunkel said he was out, and I think I'll go along with his decision. I'll buy it. So here is the veteran Rico Cardi. Rico, 37-year-old veteran from the Dominican Republic. Maybe some people forget that Rico led the National League in hitting back in 1960 or 70, I should say, with Atlanta. That at 366 has a 305 lifetime average. Maybe we can get a look at where Trammell and Whitaker are playing this fella too. We get a shot of it in a moment. They're so far in the outfield, they're going to throw a one hopper to first base. They look like short fielders there. Softball. But again, they can get away with it. They got good arms, and they know that Cardi cannot run. He's had a series of lay, uh, knee operations and leg operations throughout his career. And he is up there simply for the stick and the power. A swing and a miss, and again, Baker took something off of it. And he fooled Cardi his last time with uh, an off-speed pitch where he checked his swing and then hit a harmless ground ball to Rodriguez. Cardi 0 for 2 tonight. Cardi will step out in the uh, the mental battle between the batter and the pitcher. Batter wants to give himself some of the edge back. There is a hot shot between the infielders lying to left field as the veteran Cardi waits on what he wants and gets it. So the hit for Cardi is the fourth for the Blue Jays, and here is a man they have not been able to get out tonight, John Mayberry, who has singled twice in his two appearances. But has been left stranded both times. Mayberry, of course, born in Detroit, Michigan. Now resides in Kansas City at last word, although I'm sure he's thinking about moving up to Toronto. Which is inside for a ball. Mayberry seemed uh, rather hurt first part of the year and when he was traded just at the start of the season by Kansas City over to Toronto. 
They felt they had a young phenom by the name of Clint Hurdle who could step in and take over the first base job for Casey. And he has been playing most of the year at age 21. Which is inside for a ball. Mayberry is hit with power though. He's got 10 home runs this season. You can see this is the Mayberry shift. As Whitaker is very deep in short right field and Trammell is about three or four steps to the left of second base. They pull him deep around to the right. Pitch is high and away. And it is now ball three. Now it seems to me sometimes Baker lets the man on first or the man who has just hit the home run bother him with the next hitter. Well I don't really know but uh, he seems like he does have more trouble with when there's men on base. Uh, it looks like to me that he doesn't follow through as much as when he winds up uh, off the stretch. Fastball high and away cannot get it in so on four straight pitches Mayberry walks and Cardi will move down to second base. That'll bring up Tommy Hutton who was grounded out to the pitcher and fly to right field. And it will take a solid base hit to get Cardi home from second who again does not run well. But on the AstroTurf, you can hit him up the gap very quickly. The ball can get to uh, between the fielders. And it's always difficult to cut it off on this kind of surface. Hutton, a good line drive hitter, and will hit to left. Pitches on the outside, just missing for a ball, and that's five in a row from Baker. And we're starting to get some action down in the uh, Tiger bullpen. Fukov is uh, starting to lo loosen up. There's a ground ball to Whitaker. Should have no problem over to Thompson in time, and so Baker gets out of it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two left. And at the end of six full innings, it's the Tigers two and Toronto two. Uh, Aurelio Rodriguez. Well, we'll go to the top of the seventh inning now. Billingham will pitch here tomorrow night. And once again for the play-by-play, -play, here's George Kell. Rodriguez the batter and he fouls it away. Aurelio has been to the plate twice and he's flied to right and bounced to third. Tigers have two runs four hits the Blue Jays two runs on four hits. Garvin against Baker. One ball one strike. This game is moving right along. We're in the seventh. Tied at two. There's a strike. One ball, two strikes to Rodriguez. He'll be followed by Stanley and then Parrish. George, it seems incomprehensible that Garvin has a 6.75 earned run average. When he goes against the Tigers, it looks like Sandy Koufax. He does. Counters even at two and two. Whatever his record, whatever his earned run average, he's quite a pitcher. Well, that was a good fastball, but he got it in tight. You know, Garvin might just be a better pitcher against right handers than a left hander because against the right hander, he throws that forkball a lot more. Against the left handers, he throws his curveball and doesn't have nearly have as good a curveball as he does a forkball. Here's the payoff pitch. High fly ball hit the left. Baylor. Let's see who's going to make the play. Baylor will make it. Boy, the wind was carrying that ball. Baylor went back to the 375 mark to get it. George, before the game, I had a chance to talk to Mickey Stanley about uh, the slump the club has been going through and uh, whether or not it is concentration, and Mickey tends to think it is. Well, I think it definitely is. I think uh, sometimes uh, a team will have a, a tendency to start feeling sorry for themselves. They just go up and everybody tries to win the game themselves by swinging for the fences. I think the thing you have to do is everybody try and get that base on balls or get that little base hit to the opposite field, opposite field and do the little things that it takes to win ball games. You must have caught Nicky after he had been running a couple of laps. Yeah, he was a little out of breath there. I was going to say the same thing. He was... Once in a while, you know, these guys are out there working every minute. But um, Mickey tended to do it all himself last time at bat. He hit his second home run of the year. 
And I think he was trying to hit a home run. He looked like it on the first pitch, and then he got it on the second pitch and drilled it out of here. There's another long drive. If it's fair, it's out of here, and it is foul ball. Oh, it couldn't have been but inches foul. Oh, I couldn't have missed that pole out there by more than a foot or two. Oh, no. Inches. Third base umpire. Terry Cooney watching it all the way down the line and he had to wait for just a second. Stanley just missed a home run. Pitching coach Bob Miller went out to talk to Garvin before Stanley came up. And I was almost certain Al he was saying don't throw him a fastball especially fastball up and in because Mickey still can handle that fastball uh, up and in he likes the fastball in to begin with so uh, I'm sure Miller said keep the ball away from him. Well he threw him a fastball up and in. Willis is throwing in the bullpen for the Blue Jays another left hander. I think they lock the right handers up when we come to town. They don't allow them out on the field for fear that one might get into the ball game <laughs> by mistake. Ball two and strike two to Stanley. And the pitch. Well, there's the screwball. Three and two. Well, what is he going to throw him on the 3 2 pitch? I don't think it'll be a fastball. Well, if it is, it's going to be out over the plate. At least he's going to try to keep it out over the plate. Because Mickey's going to look for something he can really drive here. It was outside, and he walked him. Well, Stanley gets a walk. He's at first base with one out. And the batter will be Parrish. Lance walked his first time up. Then he struck out in the fourth inning. Darvin has had but two strikeouts. He got Parrish in the fourth and Thompson in the sixth inning. One strike to Parrish. In the seventh inning, Blue Jays and the Tigers tied at two apiece. Tigers took a one nothing lead in the first inning. Blue Jays came back with two in the third, and the Tigers tied it in the fourth. And we're moving right along. Fastball is in tight. One ball, one strike. Tigers have hit two long balls this inning. Rodriguez was out on a fly ball to the 375 mark. Here's a fly ball into left center. This could drop in. Baylor's got it. What a play by Baylor. Baylor made a whale of a play. Well, he just makes a super play here, as you can see. Uh, we said all along probably one of the Best center fielder they have, and just a great effort by Baylor. A uh, diving play, you can see he's got it in his glove and he stayed with it. George, he's filling in with another outstanding center fielder, Rick Bussetti, who was out with an injury. But it uh, looks like they didn't lose anything in putting Baylor out there. Well, an outstanding play and. He's really helped Garvin. Runner at first with two outs. Trammell swings at it, says the first base umpire. Al Clark asking Bill Kunkel at first base, and he said he did. One strike to Trammell. Let's pause right here for station identification. Garvin.
Marvin ready. Bouncing ball to Sharp. Gomez picks it off and the inning is over. No runs in the inning, no hits, no errors, a walk, a man left. We go to the bottom of the seventh, still tied at two. Autograph day and John Hiller recognition day. All with the Yankees in town. And George, they might be in a surly mood if the Red Sox are rammed three straight and they're winning again 4 0 tonight. Well, the Red Sox lead it 4 0 at the end of three at Fenway Park in Boston. Gullet against Torres. Seattle and Chicago, no score at the end of one. Oakland, Texas, no score at the end of one. California, Minnesota, no score at the end of one. One ball, one strike to Dave McKay. He'll be followed by Ashby and then Gomez. Here's a strike, one and two. The Cardinals lead Philadelphia 4 0. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning in Philadelphia. Pittsburgh leads Chicago 3 0 at the end of four. It's Holtzman pitching for Chicago against Blylevin. And New York leads Montreal 2 0 at the end of two. Grimsley with 11 wins going for Montreal. Three and two to Dave McKay. He's bounced to third and bounced into a double play tonight. And the pitch. He struck him out. Baker just pumped the fastball by him and McKay strikes out. Or as hard as he's throwing. Now well, that's only a second strikeout. The catcher number. Eight. I think he's throwing the ball as well tonight as I've seen him throw in uh, since his first first game here with the Tigers. Here's Ashby who had a home run in the third inning. Looked like he was trying to hit another one. John Hiller is throwing in the Tiger bullpen. And unless my eyes deceive me, that's a right-hander throwing in the Blue Jay bullpen. Here's John Hiller. A ball two and a strike one count. This is Kirkwood throwing in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Pitches outside and it's ball three and strike one. Your old friend Dave Lemanchek has been banished to the bullpen. He was in the starting rotation up here, but his earned run average now, George, is over eight per game. I guess that's a pretty good reason. There's a walk to Ashby. That's walk number four given up by Baker. Puts a runner at first base with one out. We're going to get a runner for Alan Ashby. Rick Cerrone going to run for Ashby. There's Cerrone. The announcement being made by Al Clark to the public address announcer. Gomez is the schedule batter, but he's not going to bat. They get Sam Ewing. Let's see. Well, we're going to get somebody not listed on the scoreboard, on the scorecard. We do not have a five listed on our scorecard. Looks like Sam Ewing. Maybe he has changed 
jerseys on us. Well, Ewing was down in the minors and was recently called up, although he was uh, with the club last year and in all the spring games and was with the club early in the season, but they sent him down after the first couple of weeks, George. Number five, Sam Ewing. Now it is Sam Ewing. He just changed uh, jerseys on us. Or maybe uh, they don't have him on the scorecard. So Ewing will come on to bat for the shortstop. Runner at first base, one out. Ball game tied at two apiece here in the bottom of the seventh. Have a rip at a fastball. Sunday night down in Texas, this fellow came on with two runners aboard and the score tied in the eighth inning, and he hit a line shot that was caught. Rangers won it in the ninth inning. Baker throws the curveball. Well, he saw the rip that Ewing had at the fastball, and he came back with a change-up curve. So it's strike two to Big Sam. Baker gets ready. He'll make it one and two. Blue Jays had two runners aboard in the sixth inning when Baker got him out. Pitch is a little bit high and it's ball two and strike two. He just might be sitting back waiting on the fastball here. The runner for the second out. Why Parrish made a whale of a throw. Sharon had a big lead. Look at it again now. He gets a good jump on Baker and Parrish just rifles it down there. The throws a little bit high, but Trammell puts it on him in plenty of time. Well, what an arm! What an arm is right. A great play. That's out number two, and here's the payoff pitch. A line shot to right field. Boy, you could see Ewing just waiting on the fastball. So that makes it an even bigger play by Parrish. Yeah, there's no way that Mickey could have thrown the, the base runner out at third base had uh, he had been on first base because Mickey was playing deep in right field. Well, we're going to get a runner now for Ewing. He's not listed either. That may be Tim Johnson. I think it is Tim Johnson. Running for Sam Ewing, number 17, and Tim Johnson. That's who it is. Tim Johnson. The left fielder, number Running six, for Sam Ewing. And the batter is Willie Upshaw. Pitch to Willie is outside. Baker ready. And the pitch. Right. Good fastball. One ball, one strike. We're going to have some changes in the Blue Jay lineup in the eighth inning. We'll have a new short stop and a new catcher. And a 1 1 pitch. 
Bouncing ball to the mound. Baker picks it off, flips him out. No runs in the inning. One hit. They had a walk. A man left. And at the end of seven, the Tigers two and the Blue Jays two. Jays number 17, Tim Johnson. And catching number nine, Rick Saron. Well, we'll go to the top of the eighth inning. We're tied at 2 2 now. The Blue Jays have Rick Sarone catching Tim Johnson at shortstop. George. Whitaker pops it up. John Mayberry coming in from first base will make the play on it. So there's one pitch and one out in the eighth inning. Boy, at Fenway Park in Boston, did they ever have an explosion? The Yankees got seven runs in the fourth inning. Four of those scored on a grand slam home run by Fred Stanley. Substitute shortstop. A butt down the first baseline. Garvin will make the play by himself. Well, that's the best butt that LaFleur's ever placed. And they got him. Look at it again. He just didn't quite push it hard enough. And Garvin, who just made a whale of a play, you can see, coming off the mound to get it, he's the only one that could have made the play. So two pitches and two outs in the eighth inning. Well, that's a nice play, George. The floor is so fast. If he could just lay it down more often, he's got to add 20 more points to that batting average. I guarantee you, if he lays many down like that, he'll be on. There's not many people like Garvin that will get off and get it. That's a top play, a left-handed pitcher falling to the third base side, and he recovered and came back and made the play. There's a strike to Kemp. One ball, one strike. Blue Jays have out hit the Tigers five to four and we're all tied at two apiece. Ball two and strike one. This is Jim Crawford in the Tiger bullpen. Fuka has been throwing Hiller throwing and now Crawford. Count is even at two and two. Willis is throwing again in the bullpen for Toronto. George, and that catcher down there is a kid just out of high school, number three, Brian Milner. Full count to Kemp. Now they're really high on Milner. They signed him out of high school in Florida. And it was Texas, I think, George. Texas gave him a major league contract. Ground ball to short. Tim Johnson flips the first and he got it. So the Tigers go out. One, two, three, nothing across. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We're tied at two. Big Yankee series box seats are all sold out now for the entire series. Reserved seats are available for the games on Thursday night and Sunday afternoon only. On Friday and Saturday, both the box and reserve seats are all sold out. The general admission seats are being sold on a reserved basis. Guaranteed location at three dollars fifty cents apiece. Baylor, Howell, and Cardi in the eighth. George. The pitch to Baylor is up high. Bob has driven in a run tonight with a ground ball. He's 0 for three. Chops it foul past third. Well, we got a dandy. Jerry Garvin and Steve Baker locked in a duel here. Ooh, we almost got him. Baylor digs right in at the plate. He goes into the ball much like Minnie Minoso used to. Pitches look closer than they really are. You see the way he goes right into the fastball. Looks like he's a fastball hitter looking for the fastball on every pitch. That's not a bad way to hit. 
was a high fly ball into shallow left. Trammell back. He'll make the play. So Baylor is out on a pop up. And the batter will be Roy Howell. The third baseman, number 13. Roy is 0 for 2. He's had a walk tonight. He was out on an outstanding play by Trammell his last time up. Now you almost hate to see this guy come up. He wore us out in the last series up here in Toronto back in uh, April. Well, he's really uh, improved his batting average over the last uh, three weeks of the season. Uh, here's a situation where a good hitter, he is a good hitter. The outfielders are going to have to give into him a little bit, play a little deeper than normal so the ball doesn't get by for that extra base hit. to Roy Howe. Baker has walked four tonight. He struck out two. There's a line shot right straight to Thompson. Roy Howe hit the ball hard. And you saw, Jason was there. You saw Thompson standing right on the line because he didn't want the ball to go between him and the foul line for a base hit. That would be a short two base hit down the right field line. So he was making sure that he, if he got a base hit, it would be in the middle of the field. Now here's Rico Cardi batting with two outs, nobody on, score tied in the eighth inning, and you know what he's thinking. He's got the power to hit it out of here, and he's going to be looking for one pitch. He had a line single to left field his last time up. It'll make it ball two and no strikes. Well, you can't pitch around him too much because Mayberry is the next batter. He pulled the string on him and Rico was out in front. I think you're going to have to pull the string on him a lot. Boy, he looks like he is waiting on the fastball. It's a ball loose from the uh, Tiger bullpen. One of the pitchers threw it wild to the catcher. A 2 1 pitch to Cardi. Ground ball to shortstop. Out in left field it is. Here's the throw, and he got him. Trammell was in left field when he fielded that one. Made the throw to first in time to get Cardi. 16 and 13 against left handers. 4 and 2 against Toronto. They're 17 and 15 at night. A year ago, they were only 27 and 35 at this time. Let's get going. Excuse me, Joe. Stop the batter and he takes a pitch outside. Well, the big roar you heard. The scoreboard just went up with the announcement. Here's a line drive into the corner in right field. This ball will go to the fence. Staub is going to hold with a single. There's a line shot. One hop off the fence at right, and Staub holds with a single. Well, we're going to get a pinch runner, it looks like. Yeah, I think Dillard's going to run for him. Well, Hutton made a good play on the ball. The ball bounced off, and he bared him right off the wall. But normally, in a normal situation with uh, a little faster runner, it would have been a sure double. I think he might have made it anyway. Hutton had a long throw to make. I was going to say the announcement on the scoreboard had the Red Sox for the Yankees nothing. They just posted that and the crowd went wild here. I guess evidently they're rooting for Boston. I don't understand why they're so far behind on the scoreboard. The Yankees have scored seven. In the next inning. Remember the last time we were here, the uh, ball and strike count was about two pitches behind us. They're getting it off the same ticker we get it from. The first baseman at number 30, Jason Thompson. Here's Jason Thompson. He bunts right back to the mound. He goes to second base and he got him. I'll say one thing about this is that uh, Garvin really makes a good play here. He just feels the ball. Of course, the AstroTurf gets he gets the ball a lot quicker than normal, and he just wheels the ball and throws it to second base. 
Very tough to uh, sacrifice on the AstroTurf. Now Garvin's a good fielder. We saw that on the floors, bud. He did not even look. He grabbed the ball, turned, and threw to second base in plenty of time to get Dillard. That'll bring up Rodriguez. Look out, Jason. They almost got him twice. He was leaning the other way, that's for sure. Aurelio takes it inside. Rodriguez is looking for his first hit tonight. He hit the ball deep his last time up. That'll make it a ball and a strike. We're in the ninth inning, tied at two runs apiece. Tigers have a runner at first base with one out. One ball, one strike to Rodriguez. Look out. Looks like he's giving it away a little bit, Al. He is from up here when he's going to first base. I'll tell you one thing, I heard Trzuski yell all the way up here. Get back. Ground ball foul past third. One ball, two strikes. Aurelio is going to see nothing but that screwball or fork ball now. There it is. He lines it to center field. Jason's going to hold it second. Boy, how big that bunt is. <laughs> could not get the bunt down to get the man to second. Rodriguez follows with a sharp single to center field. They have two runners aboard with one out. And the batter will be Stanley. This is a great spot for the veteran to finally get the Tigers out of this swoon. Well, I don't think he's going to get a chance to hit off this guy. Uh, Murphy's been warming up, and he's their best relief pitcher, and uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him come in here. Hartsfield, the manager, says, that's it, Jerry. He pitched a great ball game. But with two runners aboard, only one out here in the ninth inning. He's going to his bullpen. He's got his ace. So Tom Murphy, number 45, is coming on. Well, there's a new pitcher coming into the game here in Toronto with a score tied at two. What do you think Staub could have made for second?
Tigers will go against Tom Murphy, their top reliever, a 3.82 earned run average, two wins, five losses, his 24th appearance. He has five saves this season and 40 innings of work, giving up only 34 hits. So he's a tough customer. Garvin went eight and a third innings, gave six hits, walked two, struck out two, charged with a couple of runs, and two more if they score. Let's get it, George. Mickey Stanley will be the batter against Murphy. Mickey's had a home run and a walk tonight. He's one for two. Pitches down low to Stanley. He had a home run in the fourth inning. In the seventh inning, he missed a home run by inches. Ball just went foul. He later walked. The one and zero oh pitch. Mickey fouls it away. One ball, one strike. George, the outfield is really playing shallow on Mickey Upshaw in left field, and Baylor in center field are really close, and it's going to be tough for Thompson to score if the ball is hit directly at them. I can't believe that uh, Upshaw would play that close in left field. Well, Murphy is throwing hard. Misses with a fastball. Here's a pitch now. Mickey should be looking for the fastball here with uh, two and one on him. He doesn't want to go three and one. And here's a good pitch for Mickey to jump on. A ball two and a strike one count to Stanley. He chops it to the mound. He goes to second with it. The relay to first, and he's not in time. And Mayberry made a good play. Boy, McKay. Never should have thrown that ball to first base. But he threw it in the dirt. See the replay here. McKay makes the throw in the dirt, and Mayberry makes a good play. Uh, even if the ball would have bounced away from him, Thompson would have been able to score. So Rodriguez is out. That's two down, runners at first and third, and the batter will be Parrish. The catcher, number 13, Lance Parrish. Whoops. Murphy giving all kind of fakes. They're all legal, too. They're all legal, right. He went to third base first, came off the pitching rubber, then he could do anything he wanted to. Here's one that gets away from the catcher, and Thompson will come in to score. Well, we get a break. That might be the happiest thing we've seen in a long time on these telecasts. <laughs> Murphy threw the ball in the dirt. It got away. And Thompson comes in to score. Take another look at it. It goes all the way back to the stands. Well, the Tigers go out in front on the wild pitch here in the ninth inning. George, that's without a doubt the biggest break the Tigers have had in about a month. In a significant situation. Stanley goes to second. And the pitch to Parrish. Ball two and no strikes. I'll tell you what else that pitch did. It's sending a lot of people to the exits. Not much faith here in the ninth inning of the batting order. Here's a strike. I hope their judgment's right. <laughs> Ball two and strike one to Parrish. Stanley at second with two outs. Three to two, the Tigers lead it in the ninth. There's a strike and it's two and two. Boy, Murphy's got good stuff. And the pitch. He struck him out. Parrish strikes out, but the Tigers get a run. On two hits, the Vano Arrows, a wild pitch in the inning. Give up hits. And he has managed a couple of strikeouts tonight, although he appears faster than that. He's walked four. 
and going for his second win without a loss. He has a fine earned run average of 2.73. And manager Ralph Hauk would like to see nothing better than a route going performance for Baker. But he's got John Hiller warming up in the bullpen just in case. George. The pitch to Mayberry is in for a strike. Big John has had a perfect night at the plate. He's singled twice and he's walked. He didn't like the call by Al Clark, and they're having a few words at the plate. Ooh, he had a cut at it. Oakland leads Texas 3-0. They're in the bottom of the third inning. California leads Minnesota 3-1 behind Tanana. Seattle 2, Chicago 1. They're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Milwaukee 1, Baltimore nothing at the end of 3. McGregor against Travers. Ground ball to Rodriguez, who's in the shortstop position, and throws him out. They had the shift on for Mayberry. Rodriguez at shortstop made the play. So a big out here in the ninth inning, and the batter is Tommy Hutton. Do we mark that down five makes the play or six makes the play? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. The right fielder, number 14, Tommy Rodriguez has played a lot of shortstop. He was closer to second base than any any third baseman I've ever seen on a fielding play. Pitches up high to Tommy Hutton. John Hiller continues to throw in the bullpen as Steve Baker tries to get him out here in the ninth. Tigers three, Blue Jays two. You might get ball two and no strikes. Parrish going out to talk to the young man. I got a moment here, George. Uh, I'd like to inform the fans that George Carroll and Al Kaline are employed by the Detroit Baseball Club, and yours truly, Joe Pellegrino, is employed by WWJ TV Detroit and appears with the approval of the Detroit Baseball Club. 3 0 to Tommy Hutton. He's in danger of walking the tying run on. And he does. Boy, he didn't come close. And Ralph Houck has seen enough, I think. He is making his way to the mound. He signaled to the bullpen before he started to the mound to see if Hiller was ready. And he got the signal that he was, and the call has gone out. Baker got the first batter this inning, Mayberry, on a bounce out, but he didn't throw one close to Tommy Hutton. Four pitches up high. And the veteran John Hiller will be coming on while there's a new pitcher coming into the game. Here at Toronto, the score is all tied. No, the Tigers are in front. Three to two. We got one. He will switch over to the right side and is not as effective a hitter as a right-hander as he is left. George. Here's McKay batting right-handed against the left-hander Hiller. Check swing and he fouled it back. One strike. Well, this has been a close one all the way. Tigers broke a tie in the top of the inning on a wild pitch by Tom Murphy, pitching in relief. Strike two. Snapped the curveball off. McKay tried to check his swing, but he went through with it. So a two strike count to the second baseman. Rick Cerrone is in the on deck circle. Heller ready. He pops it up and may get back into the seats. Here's Parrish over near the dugout. He can't get it. This one lands right on top of the Blue Jay dugout. Alan Trammell came all the way over. Aurelio Rodriguez might have lost it in the lights. He, he ran back and uh, Trammell came all the way over to the uh, Blue Jays dugout just in case it did fall in. George, 
Sometimes there's a pretty good chance that McKay might see the straight change up here. With two strikes on him. We'll see. Here's the pitch. Fastball is up high. I thought he might waste one, Al, and then throw it. Or try to get him to go for a high fastball. He wasn't going to throw him a strike, that was for sure. Now he changed up and just did miss. Boy, it was close, and Parrish wanted it. Naturally. He might be a little biased in his umpiring. Ball two and strike two. Killer ready. Fly ball left field. Kemp is there waiting. He's got it. There's two outs. So McKay is out on a fly to left. That's out number two, and it'll be up to Rick Cerrone. He got into the game as a pitch runner for Alan Ashby back in the seventh inning. The catcher, number nine, Rick Cerrone. The pitch to Cerrone is in the dirt. Parrish hustles it and holds the runner at first base. Boy, Lance came out of there fighting that pitch. He did a good job of, of stopping the ball hit uh, just about on the plate and he was trying to keep the ball in front of him and he did a good job and as you said George he just really pounced on that ball. I think you have to give Hutton some credit too because he played heads up he knows he's the last chance. Strike and it's one and one. Yeah, they've seen the arm of Parrish, and uh, he was going to be sure. And he wasn't at all sure he could make it, so he held on. One ball, one strike. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. John Hiller trying to get him out here in the ninth inning. Save it for Steve Baker and the Tigers. One ball, two strikes to Rick Cerrone. And the pitch. That'll make it two and two. He went on the outside with a fastball. He might see that change up right here. Hiller has one of the better changeups in the game. And the pitch. Fastball, and he just got a piece of it. I think he might have been looking for a breaking pitch or a changeup. He, uh, he swung at that pitch flat footed as if uh, you would normally do when you're looking for an off speed pitch. And uh, he was just hoping to foul it off. A ball two and a strike two count. Hiller delivers. Oh, it was close. Well, you got to be fooled to take that pitch. He was caught looking at a changeup and took it for ball three. So the runner will be going on the 3 2 pitch. 3 2 and two outs. Tigers lead by a run. Here it is. He walked him. Velez, a strong right-handed batter. Takes a pitch outside. I think Hiller is off a little on his control, mainly because he hasn't worked too much lately. Right, he hasn't had too much action in the past few days. There's a curve up high. Two and zero oh to Velez. Never easy. The two and zero oh pitch. 
line drive base hit. One run is in. We got a tie ball game.